my name is Abili Nganga um, and I am uh, 32 years old. It's not been easy. I went through the primary school with, with a lot of difficulties. As I am told by my parents, we, we were turned away when they were looking for school because kids with my condition were not being accepted in school. Uh, we had, I had a lot of difficulties because I could get pressure sores, you know, uh, uh, I was wet all the time, kids didn't want to be near me, and I had, I had a lot of difficulties adjusting to that life. I was born with a condition called spina bifida. It means that when the baby was developing in the womb of the mother, the spinal cord did not form like it should. The spinal cord begins as a flat sheet of, of, of tissue. And normally, that flat sheet folds over and becomes a tube. But in spina bifida, in one area, sometimes over the ribs, sometimes down low, it just stays flat. So the brain and, and spinal cord, they work down to that point and the nerves from there down to the legs work, but there's no connection between the spinal cord and the nerves. So this is my small place. Spina bifida in a way has its problems because uh, for one, I cannot tell when I want to like empty my bladder. They need to put a catheter, a small tube up into the bladder about every three or four hours to drain the urine. If you don't do that, the urine built, goes back up into the kidneys, enlarges the kidneys and damages them. Uh, right now there's no way to fix it so that, um, so that we can help them to, to urinate on their own. I use a catheter, a size 14, to empty my bladder. Um, and I normally change the catheter monthly. When somebody pinches me, I cannot tell or I do not have sensation from the knee downwards so I get I get a lot of wounds whenever I, I, I walk barefooted. Um, um, when I sit for long I get I get I get a lot of back pains so I I, I, I avoid sitting for long. Um, and sometimes um, when it is too cold, when it is too cold also my feet get uh, very, very cold. I'm 20 years old and this is my first child. I delivered on 18th March at Rachonio District Hospital. I'm a big aunt. The delivery was not all that well. She went and uh, she has, they operated uh, when they removed the baby, they found that there was some, there was a, a given growth by, behind. They thought for us that the child was suffering from spina bifida, but we were not aware of such kind of diseases. I thought that just a mere something which uh, you can just go you operate and the baby be well. When we came here, we were told that uh, the, maybe that child will not walk again. Just hope that she's treated well. Maybe the kid got this thing because the mother was lacking some blood. She had a little blood. Because they told us that the blood disease can be also caused by lack of blood in the body system. There's two things that are related to spina bifida here in Kenya. The first one is, the mothers never take folic acid before they get pregnant. And if they take folic acid after that, it does not help. Now there's one other thing in Kenya that increases the chance of spina bifida, and that is maize. Maize. And the kind of fungus that gets onto the maize is terrible. It produces a chemical called fumanacin. 
And that chemical, fumonisin, prevents the spinal cord from folding over into a tube. And so they have two problems. One is they do not take folic acid. And the second one is they eat maize that has mold on it. We have been having uh, a gap, I would say, uh, in terms of uh, recording uh, specifically the number of uh, uh, spina, spina bifida cases that uh, uh, we are having or encountering through our health facilities. Uh, many of them are uh, 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 recorded under the category of other. And other has got so many other categories, so it is a, a, a challenge to be able to tease out uh, from the national HMIS which ones are spina bifida. But going into individual health facilities, then one can be able to see uh, the caseloads that were received. And last year, we admitted 249 children. So that's like one new baby with spina bifida, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every week, all year long. It's 12 to 1300 operations, okay? And about 250 of those are spina bifida. The amount of spina bifida that we see here in Kenya is, I, it may be the highest in the world. The only place I know that is similar is the all India Institute of Medical Sciences in Delhi, India. I mean, they have, I think, six pediatric, six pediatric neurosurgeons, and people come from, you know, all over India, which has a billion people, a billion, right? We have 42 million, but we have at least as many as they do, and maybe more. four to five percent of the babies or the children that have been admitted to Kajabi Hospital with spina bifida have died before they go home. So that might be a month after the operation, six weeks, sometimes two months. So some of these are children that were um, cared for in a local government hospital for three weeks or four weeks the back is draining spinal fluid, they get infected, they come in with a high fever, you know, their chance of not living is much higher. The baby comes down here sometimes two weeks later, sometimes two months later, sometimes two years later, but the time we need to see them is when they're born. And babies should come when they are born within one or two days. Life in college was good, um, since at least I could manage myself. Um, during that time, um, I also started um, having the courage to talk to other parents about spina bifida. And uh, it is during that time that I joined uh, a parent group called uh, Spina Bifida Hydrocephalus Association of Kenya that enabled me to talk more to parents through the group and also to talk about myself. They used to take spina bifida as, as normal disability, just something that would happen to anyone. But now after learning about me or running, learning about spina bifida through me, um, even my own friends have now started taking folic acid. According to the Kenya Demographic Health Survey, the last one, 0809, um, we were looking at uh, women who were taking uh, iron folic acid supplementation for a minimum of 90 days. And it was this month, very low, it was only 3% of the pregnant women. It's a very simple thing to, to, to do to prevent uh, by ensuring that all women of childbearing age actually have 
adequate levels of folic acid in their blood. When the girls go through puberty, when they're 10, 11, 12 years old, they need to learn about spina bifida. They need to learn about folic acid, and it needs to be available free. Within our own system, in terms of health workers, uh, the knowledge was low, and also we had challenges with the uh, supply chain. So currently, we have actually addressed all these issues. If they do those two things, there would be um, probably the one-third reduction in the amount of spina bifida, maybe 30, maybe 40 percent. And that's big. And the thing is, these are children um, who are going to have a problem for life if you don't prevent it. So why not? Mothers who have children with spina bifida, I would tell them that to have hope and to invest in their children because you never know, your child might, might be a miracle that is yet to develop. I would still encourage mothers that who, those who are in childbearing age to take uh, folic acid 